everyone that joined us on the talk just this morning. Um, and welcome to the new people. Uh, thank you for joining us for our second of four talks today for our Sport Masterclass workshops. Um, and today this talk uh, is all about sports scholarships at the University of Gloucestershire and everything in and around delivered by Cheryl and a few guest students as well. Um, for the guys that have just joined us not this morning on this talk, my name's Jack and I work at the University of Gloucestershire in the Outreach Team, which essentially allows me to run events such as this, which gives you an insight into university, why it might be an option one day, and just give you a bit more of an insight into it overall, hopefully giving you better decision making choices when you get to that stage. Some of you might be year 12, year 11, coming on to those sort of university choices one day. A few housekeeping rules before I hand over to Cheryl and the guys to deliver their talk. Um, essentially, why are we here? So these talks today, and this one included, is all about sharing the additional things that we do here at the University of Gloucestershire that sits outside of a university degree. So quite often we go to talks or go to open days and we hear a lot about the courses, which is great. But today we're sharing things that might sit just outside of that, that will enhance your experience at university, um, make it more enjoyable, but also give you this kind of career aspiration goal. So it can really help you drive towards something you have later on in life in mind. Um, or again, just sort of make you all rounded, better individual to help you when you finish university. Um, as the talk goes, it'd be great if you can keep your microphones muted just to help with noise and such. Um, and feel free if you want to chuck your camera on, you can do. But if not, you can keep it off. Um, but unless instructed otherwise, the show wants to get any engagement, um, but it might just be through the chat function, which just says there is available. So if there are any questions, we are sort of having 10, um, five minutes at the end for any questions. So throughout the talk, if anything comes to mind, um, if in a large group, for example, in a school, write down a piece of paper, chuck it to someone in charge of the laptop or computer and do get those questions in at the end. We'll make time for that, but do get them in throughout the talk. That's not a problem. Won't disturb anything. These talks are being recorded, so if any students are missing um, today or they're a bit late or anything like that, you want to share it after this. I will share these after the talk, hopefully within like a week. Um, so these have been recorded, no problems there. But lastly, just enjoy these talks. It's something slightly different that we run once a year, so really do enjoy them. Take notes on certain things that will be really interesting to you to later ask one day or to ask at the end. And do just ask those questions. Hopefully today, if not, something might spark in your brain and we'll make sure we can ask answer those um, as soon as possible. So if any Beverage, I will pass over to Cheryl, who can begin the talk. Um, over to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll just find the right screen to start off with the share. I might have to click in and out in order to get to the video that I want to show you because it's not coming very well um, from the link. So just bear with me if I've got to do a bit of admin clicking in and out with that. Um, but thank you for joining us today. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about sports scholarships, but you don't want to hear from me too much. Um, because I'm old and boring, but I've got two very exciting and fascinating sports scholars with me today who hopefully we're going to ask some questions and you're going to be able to uh, have a little chance to get to know. So what are sports scholarships? Sports scholarships are um, bursaries and um, places that we offer on the sports scholarship programme at the University of Gloucestershire, which give you a whole range of benefits if you're at a level of sport um, where you're competing at a high level, at a talented athlete or, talented athlete or elite pathway level in your sport, um, then we can offer you financial and other support to help you um, on your journey through university. There are lots of students at the University of Gloucestershire who are balancing what we call a dual career. So they are a talented athlete and they're also trying to do a degree as well. And they're balancing those two things. And we see them as equally as important as one another. And so we try and help them in every way we can to do that effectively. Um, so a standard sports scholarship includes a cash bursary. And depending on your level, that can be anywhere between 300 and 3,000 um, pounds. You get some scholarship kit, you get free physiotherapy, you get um, someone to help you with your strength and conditioning training in the strength and conditioning suite. You get access to sports psychology and sports nutrition, access to someone to help you with just your general lifestyle and organisation support, because if you are a talented athlete, you're going to be juggling an awful lot of stuff whilst trying to do a degree and compete at that high level. And you also get free gym membership and membership at the appropriate sports club for you to be able to compete in books. So I'm just gonna show you a little video of some sports scholars that we have. So just excuse me while I click out of that and back in. Okay, I'll just click onto the video now. 
please do let me know if there's any problems. If you can't see this or hear this straight away, just let me know. Is that okay? There's no sound in it, Cheryl, from what I can hear. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the same. Sorry, let me try that again then. That's my mistake. Start again, apologies. Hopefully this time with feeling. No, sorry, no sound there again, Cheryl. Oh, well, I, I've done share computer sound, so why isn't it working, Jack? Any idea? Not too sure. We we worked it a second ago. There's always technical yeah, issues, isn't there? <laughs> no, not no sound. We can see the imagery and stuff. Oh. I'm clicking on the share computer sound one, and it's just clicking itself back off again. That's really weird, isn't it? I mean, feel free to share the video, absolutely, if, you, if you'd like to, but we just can't. Yeah, sound it has all. got subtitles, to be fair, but it's a bit disappointing. Hmm. There's still no sound. No, no sound there. Feel free to play the video, though. We can still okay. see plenty of it. Sorry about that. Right, so sorry about the sound on that. That's a little bit disappointing, but hopefully you're back to the PowerPoint now. Can we all see that? Yeah. Yeah, all good. Sorry, I've now got background noise. Just 
get rid of this. Don't know why it's doing that now. You can't hear anything and I can hear all the noise. <laughs> Are you back to the presentation again? Sorry. Yeah, we got you. OK, super. Um, so you might have picked up from that video there um, that we do scholarships for both athletes, coaches and officials. So one of the sports scholars talking in that particular presentation um, was actually a rugby union referee who's gone on to referee at quite a high level as well. And we're going to talk to one of our current referee scholars um, in a few moments. But that's quite a unique offering at the University of Gloucestershire. Lots of universities do do sports scholarships. So if you're performing at a high level, I would recommend as you think about universities, you look into that. Um, but at the University of Gloucestershire, we do scholarships for athletes and coaches and officials, which is quite a unique offering. Um, so just a few people that we have, some of our current scholars. Most of these people are very busy today because it's actually varsity over this sort of fortnight period at the moment between Worcester and Gloucester. So a lot of these people are actually competing today um, or at the moment. Um, so we have here Jane Taylor is a seven stars netball player and she's doing a master's. She's done her degree all the way through, done her BSc in sports therapy and now doing a master's in sports therapy. Um, we've got Mike Holden, who's a rugby league player, who's a professional player for West Wales Raiders um, and has also been selected for England universities this year, which is really exciting. He's doing a sports coaching degree. We've got Cecilia Tupelotu, who's currently um, just got her first cap at the weekend for the Senior Wales Women Rugby Squad, which is pretty impressive. And she's doing a degree in psychology. So that's one of the other things as well. Um, to be a sports scholar, you don't have to be a sports student. Obviously, lots of people who are interested in sport do a degree in that as well. Um, but you can be studying any degree at Cheltenham or Gloucester, any of the courses that we have um, to be and to be a sports scholar. If you're competing at a high enough level, um, you can choose from any of the degrees across all of the campuses. And finally, we've got uh, Chloe Robbins Landricum, who's the current um, less than 52 kilogram weight category British champion in judo. And she's doing a physiotherapy degree. So we've got quite a range. Um, it, really interesting people to work with. Obviously, that's just a few people and we've got many more than that. Um, but it's really interesting to see the kind of the range and type of scholarships that we have and students that we have studying across the university. And now I'm going to talk to a couple of people that we have currently on the scholarship. Um, so we have Shab and Lauren. So I'm going to talk to Shab first. Shab, I can't see what's going on because I'm presenting. Have you got your face up on the screen now? Can everyone see Shab? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> yeah. Jack, can you see Shab? Is that all you've got? His volume and everything? I've got his volume and sound, uh, his volume and picture. So we'll see. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. Right, we'll talk to Shab first then. Um, so as you can see from the slide there, um, Shab is a professional boxer. He did amazing things in amateur boxing and then just last year turned professional. Um, so Tell us, Shab, how did you get into boxing and how did you kind of get to where you are in your career now from a boxing point of view? Uh, well, I've, I've always, uh, like as a, as a young kid, I always wanted to do some sort of sport. Uh, I tried kickboxing, judo, all of them probably for a week. Uh, it might sound a bit, uh, I, I might sound a little crazy, but when I first joined uh, the boxing club, the first day I started doing some sparring and I, I kept getting hit, hit in my face and I just fell in love with it ever since. Uh, and I was 14 when I started it. Uh, it's been nearly nine years and I'm still boxing. Uh, as an amateur boxer, I won uh, the Western Counties Championship three times, uh, won the National England Championship uh, in 2017. Uh, but after I wanted to go pro quite early, uh, but due to COVID, it, it literally took uh, probably uh, for most of the people, but it literally took two years of my career. But then when all the lockdown and everything's over, uh, got over, I turned pro, had my first fight last September, but I'd just been a little bit unlucky with the uh, injuries. So I just picked up an injury in my last fight and still recovering from it. And I have another fight in June 4th in Gloucester. Fantastic. What would you say has been your biggest sporting achievement? I think it was uh, winning the 2017 
England's national championship. Just because when I started it, I never thought I could get to that level. I was I was, I was watching uh, other people do sparring, training, and I was just admiring how the, how they could box and how how good they looked. And I just in my in my mind, I never thought I could get there. So with hard work and with everything, uh, it just it just came, it just happened. And I was like, I was I was grateful, to be honest. And um, it says on the screen there that you do a Bachelor of Science in Strength and Conditioning. But what is that? Can you explain your degree programme to us? Uh, well, I mean, I really, because I'm, I'm boxing, I'm my all interest, everything evolves. Like whatever I do, what, what I eat, when I sleep, whatever I do, it's all around the sport. So uh, when I finished school, I went to do my apprenticeship as a, a personal a gym instructor and personal trainer. After that, I I wanted to come in straight and do a degree in uh, strength and conditioning just to help me with my own training. But also, uh, boxing career is not very long. So I was thinking uh, a little bit ahead, maybe after when I finished my boxing, I wanted to make sure I I train with athletes and I and I help people the way people are have helped me. So I went to uh, college, I did a year of uh, uh, health and social care just to make sure I'm academically okay to go to university. Uh, after that, I went to start a uni, uh, in, in, I mean, Gloucestershire Uni and uh, doing strength and conditioning. Just helping athletes uh, how to get stronger, how to get fit, uh, any injuries they have, uh, helping rehabilitate that. Fantastic. And if you found that um, doing a degree that's obviously so close to so closely related to your training, your boxing, has that helped in your box, boxing and have the lecturers helped you? Have you found that whole relationship? Oh, absolutely. Like, in a, in a, in a, I mean, in every from the first uh, lecture I've had every time uh, with every strength and conditioning uh, lecturer, every time they finish, I go and have a chat with them. I, I relate everything I learn. I straight away related to my own training because I'm a professional boxer. Eventually, when I when I finish my boxing, I will be working with professional athletes. So I want to make sure I I relate everything to myself first, how I feel, uh, how it affects my training, what I've learned, if what I've learned from the lecturers. If I'm doing anything wrong in my own training, I need to change it. Like I used to have like a an old school mindset that. I should only do like hard work and train seven days a week, no rest days. We don't do no rest days. However, since joining uh, the uni and doing uh, SNC degree, I've come to learn different that you, our body do need some rest. Uh, you got to train. Uh, yeah, you need to train hard, but you also need to train smart. And uh, I mean, the lecturers have helped me a lot, to be honest. Every time I've got a uh, my personal tutor, Edward Baker, who's also interested in uh, uh, combat sport. Uh, he's, he's doing my SNC. Literally, I'm training with him two, three times a week. And whenever I've got any questions regarding my training, I drop him a message and he comes back to me straight away. Uh, he's, he writes me training programs. I mean, we just hit it straight off, to be honest. Uh, it's great. That does sound pretty amazing. Um, in terms of Boxing and obviously you, your training load is really high. How are you boxing to such a high level and managing to fit in a degree as well? Is it is it busy? Uh, it, yes, it it is busy. However, I mean, if if you love something, uh, then as they say, if, if if you love doing something, that's not work. And it's same same sort of principle here. I I love training, so I train all the time, and I got plenty of time uh, with. Professional athletes, it don't mean that you're going to train 24 hours a day. You probably train once in the morning and then uh, two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. And then you got the rest of the day. Uh, you could either go to work, work, or you could, if you've got something else, like I've got uni, I can do my uni stuff. Uh, so I just come and do my uni stuff. It's actually, when I'm doing my uni stuff, it's, it's taking that, uh, my mind, giving my mind and body a little break from my training to actually focus on something else. And I really enjoy that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've had a great help. To be honest, I've had really good help from uh, 
from Gloucester University. Like at the moment, as I said before, I've pulled my hamstring, I've fractured my hand. Uh, so I've, ha I've been having a physio uh, pretty much once a week uh, provided from uh, Gloucester University. I've, I've got a nutritionist who's, who's helping me get me on, on top form and get me the right weight. Uh, and also as uh, strength and conditioning, I've got a great uh, tutor who, who's also helping me with my all, all the strength and conditioning that I need to make sure I'm ready for my next fight. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, joining the uh, Gloucester University has actually helped even progress my boxing career further than it was before. That's really good. You've kind of sort of gone on to the next question now um, with some of what you just said, but just if, in case there's anything else in there that you missed, my next question was going to be about the sports scholarship programme and how that's helped you. But you mentioned some of the things there in terms of the physiotherapy and the nutrition and things which come actually through the scholarship programme, don't they? Um, is there anything else or how have you found being a part of the scholarship programme? I mean, uh, the scholarship programme is, is absolutely, it's amazing, literally, like a uh, for someone like me, I, I'm a student. I'm I'm not I'm not really rich. I'm just living a student life. Uh, although I do I do work a little bit, uh, but like doing a physiotherapy is usually probably costs you about thirty thirty pound to sixty pound, and I get that for free, uh, because I'm a sports scholar. Uh, also, nutritionist, you get like fifty pound or or more, but I get that free because of this through the sports scholar. So the sports scholar has actually helped me develop a lot and progress, get the high level nutrition and care that I need. Like, although I'm, I'm at the moment, I'm very, uh, I've just turned pro. I've had my first professional fight. I'm just at the beginning of my career, uh, but I'm already, because of the sports scholarship, I'm already being treated like an elite top athlete just like I, if I was fighting for a world title. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you, Shab. That's all the questions from me. But if anyone in the audience has got any questions for Shab, just throw them in the chat and we'll come back to them at the end. Um, so if that's all right, we'll move on to Lauren. Lauren, have you got your mic yeah. on and your camera? Yeah. Let's see if everyone can see you. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, we got all good. Super. Um, so it says on the screen next to Lauren Kiancha here that she's an international, international can't say the easy word, botcher coach and referee. Um, the first question on everyone's mind, Lauren, is what is botcher? Yeah, so botcher is a Paralympic sport um, similar to bowls, um, played in individuals, teams of three or pairs. Um, and the principle is very simple. You've got a white target ball, a red side and a blue side. You try and get as close to the white target ball as possible. Um, so similar to bowls, um, but obviously it's adapted for athletes with complex physical disabilities. Um, and there's a lot more tactical and technical elements to it than you'd think um, just from that very simple explanation or from watching any any videos of the sport. But yeah. That's brilliant. And my next question sort of leads on, but also sort of um, touches on the scholarship programme a little bit, because I'm going to ask you about your role. Obviously, we heard from Shab, who's obviously on an athlete scholarship um, because he's performing in that sport. But we also do coaching and refereeing scholarships. And you do both of those roles um, at an international level in your sport. So can you just tell us a little bit about what you do as a coach and what you do as a referee? Yeah, so uh... Um, an international referee um, and travel the world with the sport um, for various competitions um, and then coaching wise I'm a national coach um, but I do some work with GB at the moment as well um, I'm working quite co quite closely with one of the performance coaches who've been my mentor for the last couple of years um, and that's opened a lot of doors for me and given me a lot of opportunities so I'm working with a few athletes at the moment that he's working with um, and they'll hopefully be progressing into the squad soon enough um, I worked with one of his athletes in the lead up to Tokyo as well, um, helping to prepare her for the game. So I've got my got my uh, foot in both both camps really as a coach and official um, on a refereeing scholarship at uni. Um, being able to join in with some of the coaching stuff as well because I'm 
also performing at a high enough level um, for that. So I've joined a couple of the, the CPD workshops um, with the coaching group as well. Brilliant. Um, so tell us a little bit more about your international refereeing then, because that sounds exciting. Where has it taken you internationally and are you going on any travels this year? Yeah, so um, I've been, my first international sort of appointment was um, to be an assistant referee at the World Championships. Um, it was home, it was a, a home competition. Uh, we hosted it in Liverpool in 2018, but I think that was the competition that made me realise that I, I did want to go further in the sport. Um, and to, to be around the world-class players was something that I never thought would happen. Um, so then I managed to qualify as an international referee in 2019. Um, and that was a pretty crazy season for me. Um, I think I had like 19 flights that year um, and travelled to Poland, Italy, Spain. Um, where else did I go? Uh, Portugal. Um, I, yeah, loads of places. Um, I've, I'm flying to Croatia on Sunday for a competition for a World Challenger event. Um, and I, I've just had an email, well, on Friday, um, inviting me to Rio in a month. Um, so I come back from Croatia for just over a week and then I'm going to be flying off to Rio as well to referee a World Cup. Um, hopefully, well, I will be going to Portugal at least once this summer as well. Um, so yeah, I've got a few competitions in the diary, which is exciting. Wow, Rio de Janeiro. So will you be at the, what was the Paralympic site in 2016 for that? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be using one of the Paralympic venues for that, which is, again, just a bit surreal, really. Um, you'll get to see what we all saw on the TV at the Olympics and everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exciting stuff. So when you started at the university, it was a few years ago now, because you're a master's student now and you've done your degree and you've been away and you've come back to do a master's. Um, so what, at age 18, where were you in Botcher and how have you sort of developed as your degree has gone on? Yeah, so when I started, I was, I think, a level three referee, maybe a level two, just having done my level three assessment. They they changed the system and I was sort of in between two bands. Um, so I was pretty much as high as I could be nationally. Um, and I was too young, I think, to do the international course the last time it happened, which was very frustrating because I was ready and able to do it. I just didn't tick the age box, which was a little bit annoying. Um, so I was traveling the length of the country almost every weekend for some competition or another, um, just to get some experience and get some get some matches under my belt. Um, the, the competition days for us are very long. So it's not like, you know, a lot of the football and rugby referees will go out and they'll run around for 90 minutes, twice a week twice a weekend or something like that I will generally be on court from nine till six um all day usually back to back because I'm one of the young referees and I can hack back to back games and they just throw them at me um which is a good challenge but obviously it's they're very long days so in a competition I probably get at least five if not more most of the times um matches under my belt and usually they're two days of two day events as well so, you know, kind of looking at 18 hour days, really, um, from the minute you get up to the minute you get back into the bed. So, um, yeah, when I started, it was quite intense, um, but. Yes, yeah, managed to level off a little bit since I got my international qualification. Coaching wise, actually, I was I was at an academy level as well, so it was. Intense, but not too bad. Again, it was, yeah, that's probably, it's probably gone the other way, actually. Refereeing's come from up here to a bit more manageable and coaching's gone from down here to probably ramping it up a little bit more now. So that's quite interesting to look back on. And throughout all of that, obviously you did a degree, you got your degree yeah. um, the summer before last and did really well. How have you managed to balance everything then with international travel? What's happened if you've been away in another country and you've had deadlines and how, you know, how have you managed to do it all? Yeah, so for me, this is where the scholarship has been crucial. Um, so I've had, as Shab said, I've had the best support from the team, um, from Chris, who leads the referee programme, from Cheryl, from the other support staff around that as well, that, um, you know, my my personal tutor, my lecturers, I've always tried to keep everyone in the loop with every appointment that I get. So um, whether that's national or international, it doesn't matter, in my opinion, if it's going to take a big chunk of time out of my week, then people probably need to know. Um, 
even if there aren't many deadlines around, I, I, I generally share my diary with everybody as early as I can. So even before I'd got my place confirmed on the master's programme, I'd already contacted everyone again and said, I've got this coming up. I'm going to be away on this date. Just keeping the keeping the communication on that open from very early on. I think that I fell into a bit of a trap of not doing that in second to third year, I think. It was there was a lot going on and I was really, really busy um, and just thought that I could manage it. And it didn't, I didn't really appreciate how much everybody could support me with that. Um, and once the penny dropped, and maybe I bashed my head against the wall a couple of times and everybody else was watching me. Um, it was really helpful to, to just start that communication as early as possible and get everybody on the same page. And like you said, if I'm away at an international or I'm, I've got three weekends on the bounce where I'm, you know, I'm losing some of my study time. Then we've been able to move some deadlines around and work together to to fix a date for a deadline that suits me and my my current workload. Um, and like I said, it's, it's not an easy process. There's a lot of people involved in doing that, um, but but it is possible, um, and it means that I can travel and I don't have to miss opportunities to to travel anywhere in the world um, based on my my academic sort of deadlines as well brilliant so there's one more thing just to bring you back to then and that's yep. um when Shabir was talking about uh like the nutritional support and strength and conditioning and things like that I think we can pretty much all see how important that is to a boxer but some people are looking at a botcher referee thinking all you're going to do is stand there and watch and make some decisions um how is how has those types of support helped you as a referee? Because that might be less obvious how that kind of thing, like, do you do strength and conditioning? Is that part of your scholarship? And do those sorts of things help you as well? Yeah, so I have access to exactly the same um, support that Shad gets. Um, and initially, I was a bit sceptical um, because it doesn't exist in my sport. The, the rugby and football guys are used to training. They have to run around for 90 minutes and they have to be able to keep up with the, the game that's going on in front of them. I'm a very different referee in Boccia and I, I am static for up to two hours. Um, very little movement involved, but there's probably more emphasis on needing strength for exactly that reason. Um, as I said earlier, some you know competition days can be up to 18 hours. Um, and the the mental strain that that puts on you as well as your physical you know you need strength and stability to be able to stand pretty still for that amount of time um, so the strength and conditions really help me um, to be able to withstand the long days and I like I said that's probably why I get the back-to-back -back games um, and yeah I, I really missed it actually when I had my year out um, between my undergrad and my master's um, I really missed that time in the gym with the rugby and football guys. They really pushed me and um, I definitely felt a big difference when I was on court. Um, and the nutrition side of it as well has been huge for me. Um, it's not really a secret that when I'm at events, I tend to drink a lot of water, but not eat a lot of food. Um, partly because I don't always get the chance because I am usually run off my feet. Um, but also I don't, don't really want to be eating loads when I'm stood for long periods of time and you know I just tried to almost uh just get get through the day and I think adrenaline carried me through the day but the support that I've had from the nutrition team um has been again huge you know to be traveling for long periods of time you need to plan ahead you need to think ahead for the long days and you know food is often unpredictable when you're traveling internationally you don't really know what you're going to be faced with um so always having backups and um like i said thinking ahead planning um has been really helpful yeah so it's just as important for me as it is for the for the athletes um and the the more typical referees um but also i, I apply some of it into my coaching role as well so you know if i have long days the athletes that i work with also have long days so um, I can share some of the tips that I've got with them. You know, I'm, I'm not a nutritionist, but we can sort of collaborate a little bit on that. Um, so, yeah, it's been quite helpful in my other other half of the job as well. Fantastic. Thank you, Lauren. 
Um, I'll just click out of here. But guys, again, if you've got any interesting questions about Botcher or about Lauren and what she's doing, please throw them in the chat. Um, so just really finishing up from me and then we'll have a few minutes at the end for questions. Um, I've just put that last slide up there just so you can see how to contact me, us, the team. If you are interested to get more information about sports scholarships, um, you can email sportsscholarships at gloss.ac.uk. Um, for more information, we've also got a website where you can um, pick up lots of information there. Um, so I'll stop sharing that now. Has that gone down? Yep. OK, super. So have we got any questions in the chat, Jack, or is anyone coming in with anything so nothing yeah honestly firstly thank you very much for yourself cheryl and you two guys for all of that that was really insightful good views from the students and good insight to what the program looks like now which is brilliant so yeah please do um any questions we've got just under sort of 10 five minutes left in the call so please do get them on there if it's a big group write them down chuck them to the front get someone to type it in for yourself no problem or come off the mic that's that's not an issue i guess i had a question for the two students um obviously it's about the scholarship program in some ways but more or less, there's some students in this call that might be thinking about university still, might be thinking, is it right for myself? Is it one of the choices I want to make? Why did you two decide university? Because by the sounds of it, you're quite successful in what you're doing. And some people might think, oh, why at university if you're a professional boxer or a professional boxer coach? So why did university become a choice for yourself? So either of you want to chuck yourself in there first. Uh, yeah, I'll, I don't mind going first, Lauren. <laughs> uh, well, uh, as, as I said before, uh, boxing is, I, I am successful in my boxing. I'm very happy where I am, uh, but I'm, I still have a long road ahead of me. Uh, but boxing is only a short career. So you only have, if, if you're lucky, you probably have like a 10 years of U prime after that. Uh, you should get out of boxing because you don't want to get hurt. You know, uh, for that, just for that reason, uh, because boxing career is short, I can continue to box for the rest of my life. So it's going to be 10 years. Like after 10 years, I need something. I need to do something. But I, I can't just get up and go and do like a nine to five, a, an office job or an, another job. I like sport. I want to be involved in sport all the time. And I think after, after my boxing career, I think the next biggest thing, the next I next thing I really would enjoy is to train athletes to get to my place but even go even further and share my knowledge that way that way I'm still involved in in the training I'm still I'm still working hard I'm not getting too fat you know so I'm still in the gym perfect thank you very much and, and yourself Lauren why was university a choice for you yeah, so initially uni wasn't a choice for me. Um, I wasn't wasn't sure that I wanted to go um, and it was, I kind of fell into it in some ways. Um, but as I sort of went through the process of applying, I then became aware of the benefits that it could give me um, outside of the obviously the qualifications. Um, for me, it was a way to keep doing what I was doing and not be almost shackled to a nine to five where I couldn't get the time to do what I wanted to do and progress um, to reach my full potential and further. Um, so for me, it's given me the flexibility to to do what I'm doing um, and, you know, to come to come back now. Um, honestly, the scholarship was a huge driver for me as well in the early days of applying, um, because that that really sort of highlighted that I could do what I was doing and more. Um, and, you know, now it's thankfully my course sort of sits into the Paralympic cycle as well. So my undergrad would have finished in the summer before Tokyo would have happened. Obviously, it happened a year later. But after that, then jobs may well have come up and everything changes after a cycle. So, again, my my master's is part time. So it takes me to Paris. Hopefully I will be in Paris in one way or another. Um, and then it opens doors for me after that again. So it is a huge enabler to continue doing what I'm doing and put myself in the best position then in at the end of the next cycle essentially to put myself into a job hopefully. 
That's perfect. Thank you. So really exciting things coming up then for you, Lauren, hopefully, and you as well, Shab. So I guess the last question I had before anything else does come in the, the chat, please do so. So not ages left. Answer it as, as quickly and as precisely as you can. Um, obviously, both of you are doing, you could say, elite levels of sport, but the sound of it, you know, the peak of the performance or the peak of your environment, you could say. What if there are some individuals in here that want to maybe go on a scholarship, enhance their sporting experience, but maybe don't want to play top level. So Shab, for example, is there like a boxing society, a club that's there just for athletes who want to get better at the sport and compete, but maybe not go the heights that you are? Does that make sense? Uh, yes. I mean, uh, Boston University do, do run some uh, cricket, cricket club, uh, football club, rugby, uh, a weightlifting club, uh, even bo even boxing club. Uh, I mean, just to just to learn the basic stuff, uh, how to box, uh, how to uh, protect yourself or defend yourself, uh, just if you ever need it. So they do do run all those uh, clubs if you want to just uh, stay at the low level. Uh, but to be honest, uh, if, if we just go back, uh, sorry, I'm just going off your question, but if we just go back to the actual degree, uh, all these students, if they think, uh, if they're still halfway off, can I do this degree or can I not? I mean, I'm from Afghanistan. I'm not. I'm not actually from England. I'm from Afghanistan. I I came over uh, in 2014 with no English, literally, and no schooling background. So I started school and I did school for uh, for two years. After that, I did my apprenticeship, which wasn't really academic, and I was still in doubt whether I could actually do the uni degree i wanted to do it always it's just uh but i was never able to uh, convince myself okay am, am i ready to do it? i don't want to go and fail it and just say oh i wasted a year of my life for two years and came out but i after my apprenticeship i i went to do a health and social care degree uh health and social care course level three in uh gloucestershire college I just wanted to know whether I could actually do it. So I did the, it was a two year course. I did the one year. And after that, I just felt like on my first assignment, I literally, you're only supposed to write like uh, 2000 words. I literally wrote 17,000 words. There was no limit to it. I wrote 17,000 words just to make sure that I pass it. And I was the first student to get like distinction on their first assignment in that course and the rest of them, just got like C and failed it most of it. So I was very happy with with that. Although the 17,000 words was a bit too much, you know, <laughs> uh, he, the teacher wasn't happy with marking it. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that I was a capable of doing the degree. So once I got confident over time, did the first year, I just knew I could do it. And coming to, uh, coming to uh, joining the uni, I, I don't want to, make it sound but it's actually it was easier than college for me and I found it a lot easier just because of the support that is available and the help that I get from my lecturers and everything around it's not like if if you actually want to do a degree if there is something that you really want to do uh, whether it's Gloucester uh, uni or some other uni that you like and you want to do it you want to do it to the high level uh, it's not hard as, as long as you want to do the work, it's not hard. And it don't actually take a whole, it don't, you, it don't take over your life. That's not it. It's, it takes some part of your life, just like school does. And you ha you'll have some free time to do whatever you want, whether you want to work or whether you want to do some sport or whatever you want to like to do. That's perfect. Thank you very much for elaborating there. Some really good insights into your journey. Um, and it goes to show that it is possible for almost anyone, isn't it, to get that degree. So thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I'll just share some last few bits towards the end of this um, workshop. Um, whilst you do that, please do put any questions in. Me and the guys will stay here for a few more minutes, which is not a problem. So any questions, do just ask. The final comments we're going to make, you might have seen this in the last slide, so apologies if it's duplicated. Um, for any Year 12s on the call, we do have our Year 12 summer residential happening um, towards the end of this year in July. Um, these are when you stay on campus of us for three nights, stay in four days. 
and you get to experience that university feel. So if any students are still on the boat and on the fence, rather, about unsure whether it's universities for them, this is a great opportunity. There's the links to apply. I'll send these out again, as I said this morning, if you haven't got time to write them down. Um, or any questions, do get in touch with us in the outreach team. There is a sporting strand for this, and there's other subjects as well as sport is it maybe a choice for yourself so please do um, get on board with that if it's of interest and equally if university is still unsure you are sure not sure all those kind of areas come to an open day whether that's us or somewhere else but ideally come along to us meet the guys you speak you've seen today meet some academics see the accommodation see the facilities get to really good so sort of get a feel of the university and, and get to know it a bit better before making maybe some choices so we do really invite you to an open day please come along and see us and to get a better feel for it but um, as I said, there are some time for questions um, which have been going on. If none there, thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you have to leave, you are free to do so now, but we'll stick around for a few minutes if any questions come in. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jack.